This should be the last video of this, so... Let's do it. Oh, look, Emma's back. Joyous day. Will the defendant Miss Lannisky please take the stand? Miss Lannisky, you are the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Mr. Edward, you already know everything. You know all that I've done these past two years. Please provide the court with the testimony, Miss Guy. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course. The truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister! That's kind of a no-brainer. Like, I know. No need to tell me that. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. You're the only chance we have to get Gant. And considering you're being blackmailed by him, I have no idea why we're even trying this. Like this will actually work out. I worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. What capital offense? You're basically con... Uh, d d what, whatever the f Yeah, confessing. You're confessing to having fabricated evidence. Far as I know, that's not a capital offense. You're not going to get killed for that. Sure, you already confessed to having stabbed a uh, goodman, but, you know, who gives a fuck about that? That doesn't matter anymore. Not until the last 15 minutes of this entire case. So really, you're not confessing to anything big. If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her! She's sacrificing herself because of me! You know what? I have an idea, Emma. Why don't you kill yourself? Then there's gonna be no necessary necessity for her to be blackmailed anymore, or sacrificing herself for anything. It's an idea! But what if she's telling the truth? Yeah. Totally. She's not. I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. You know, given how she talks later on, it's still pretty stiff. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. Wouldn't you be second-guessing her? The defense may not begin its cross-examination. How many years, exactly? Ever since I met Senior Detective. Keine Einzelheiten wie viele Jahre! You know, don't give me this overall thing, I need a number! Let's see, I was 24 then, so that'll be five years. Why not just say so immediately, instead of prolonging this game even more? Detective Gant and Detective Sky were legendary partners. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. Oh yeah, Mia was such a great... Yeah, Mia was awesome. Dame Gant was a respectable detective. But think about it, Miss Guy. 
You didn't murder Detective Goodman. You told me as much yesterday in jail. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Wright? Any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. Yes. That was a private conversation which cannot be held viable in court. She's right about that. I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. Well, she's not wrong about that, but then admitting it like that, you know, I stabbed him means nothing. It, she could have stabbed him and he could be injured, but not dead. So, you know, once again, there's a difference. Also, I'm yawning a lot, although I'm not really tired. Did you do so to help your sister? Joel Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim that day. I didn't want that incident to ruin her life. But what she did was justifiable self-defense. Silly Phoenix. That doesn't exist in your world, remember? Aren't you the one who... What was it? This is February. In like four months. Is gonna say yourself... Justifiable self-defense is basically admitting that you killed someone. It would still ruin her life. So really, admitting this or giving this as an option... You're an idiot. She wouldn't have been charged with anything. Uh... Phoenix? You need to go back to law school. Even if it's justif justifiable self-defense, that is still a charge on your record, and that is on your record, and you can't really remove it. So, yeah. You need to go back to law school. That's not the point. She was traumatized that day, all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. Lana! Shut up, Emma! So that's why you fabricated the evidence two years ago? You say you did this all by yourself? Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken cross circuit award knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change this statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Dark? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. You didn't expect this when you asked her to testify. All well, just to protect me. Shut up, Emma. So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. So... Wait a second. This is Lana. She's not that strong of a woman. But she just took the switchblade and went flick with the tip and then put it into into the wound in the body. This is the woman who was so so shaky when she stabbed Goodman with another knife that she cut her own hand. But she could do this just fine? Also, yes, nobody ever mentioned this. I don't remember if I mentioned it during the course of the case, but Goodman would have been stabbed twice, not once. Especially if Lana was so shaky. There would have been a second entrance wound, or there would have been a different... There's difference in how the wound would look, since it was stabbed with two different knives. Of course, if you ever get to a proper contradiction in the cane, in the game or the case, it doesn't really count.
You planted the tip, and you moved the body. But why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. My head isn't that bad, but maybe I have to ask for the other sake. But why did you do that? Come now, Mr. Wright. Even you shall be able to figure it out. Very well, let's add this to the witness's testimony. The reason this guy fabricated the knife. I, I know she's lying, but... Room. Dead person. Serial killer. Doesn't matter if the weapon is different, you'd still jump to the conclusion that the killer did it. According to your testimony, Prosecutor Marshall's broken knife was the murder weapon, right? Yes, and leaving it at that mo might point the blame away from Dark. Why? You think Marshall stabbed himself in the back with his own broken knife? I felt the most effective way to get him convicted would be by having the tip of his knife found inside the victim's body. So you buried it inside the victim's stab wound? Yes. Because I hated Dark for what he did. So you rearranged the crime scene. Are you sure you didn't do this to keep Emma from looking like the murderer? How many times do I have to tell you, Mr. Wright? Emma didn't do it. Period. Are you so desperate to hide that fact? You're willing to risk the death sentence? She's been willing to do it for two years. What makes you think it'll stop her now? She's lying! She did it so I wouldn't be blamed for what happened! In any case, as a prosecutor, what I've done is unpardonable. There's nothing I can do to make up for my actions. Mr. Wright! My sister's lying! Looks like she's determined to protect you to the end. She insists she fabricated the evidence by herself. There's no way she could have done it alone. I've got to get along to talk more. If she's lying, then she's bound to slip up and make a contradiction. Yep. Eh, let's go for the other one, why not? Wrong one. Yes, I don't remember which testimony it was anymore, and quite frankly, I don't care. Because everything is a lie. And really, I just want to get this case over with. When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where he deduced it was, by Chief Gant's desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason this guy moved the body. Pieces of the jar? You mean... Yes. That wretched jar Mr. Sh Wright showed us earlier. Well, at least she appropriately hates the jar, as much as I do. In order to show that dark man of the crime, I felt it would be more expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jar was already... Of course, it had been shattered to pieces. If you looked at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened.
Neil Marshall was dead, but Doc was lying unconscious. In other words, the jaw must have been broken during the struggle. AC. Good contribution, Your Honor. What's the matter, Emma? Apparently the jar shattered at the time the crime was committed. But I have a feeling there's more to it than that. There must be a contradiction here somewhere. Anyway, I committed this con fabrication completely alone. Miss Guy, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered? If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life will have been useless. Even so, I am compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction within your testimony. Why didn't you say this without four previous textbooks? Text boxes. It. You testified, and I quote, The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. You know, I somehow feel very, very sad for the stenographer of this trial. That's right. Do you have a problem with it? It's a simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on the jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to write his message on the jar, it mustn't yet have been broken before he died. So yes, apparently the jar flew up in the air, fell down, didn't break, then something was written on it, then it apparently fell down again, and then it broke. That's stupid. He couldn't have written Emma's name on the shattered jar, yeah? That's true. Yes. Your Honor, it would appear more information is needed in regard to this jar and its blade message. <sighs> Fuck this jar. Something critical? Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're as in the dark as we are about the truth towards which we are headed. Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. This is the wrong title for the testimony. It should just be in capital letters. Letters. The jar. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped over the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. You mean, you were the one who wiped away this message in blood? I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. So? Very well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. So, the jar was already broken? It's a miracle that thing hadn't broken earlier. An impossibility, I'd say. It certainly looks as feeble as the defense's case. Oh, burn, Your Honor. Not as feeble as the judge's judgment. You are an ace detective who never missed a detail. Do you really expect us to believe that you didn't investigate what was written on the jar pieces? No. So, you didn't know your sister's name was written on the jar? No. If I had known, 
I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them to dust. Well, that helps my case. You do that for me? Shut up, Emma. It seems you two might make up yet. Yeah, because they so totally hated each other to begin with. Their hate is about as believable than Twitus and Jack's hatred for each other. I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon the scene, you'd lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is really shocking. I'm afraid this action of yours reveals what really happened. What do you mean? If you really thought Dark killed Prosecutor Marshall, you wouldn't have wiped away the blood. What else could I have done in that situation? Lady! You walked into a room with three people in it. Unconscious sister, unconscious known multiple killer, and dead prosecutor. You tell me which any other person would think, Hey, I think somebody killed someone here. Wonder which one of these two could it be? The known killer? Or my dear young sister who has the physical strength of a mouse? You're an idiot for thinking your sister was at fault for anything, even when you went into the previously forged crime scene. Especially since some of the hints were already removed by the time you came in. So really, even less reason why you would think Emma was the killer, you fucking idiot! What kind of shit sister are you to walk into that situation and think, My god, my sister killed someone! I mean, I'm not against the idea of thinking, well, my, it's my relative, yes, but I think under the right circumstances they could end up hurting someone to the point of death. If somebody asked me, do you think your mother could kill someone, I'd say, yes, in the right circumstances, if it, you know, right situation, she's in the right mindset and everything, yes. But I wouldn't go into something that looks as vague and crappy as this and think, oh my god, she did it, when really there's no reason to think that. Stupid Lana. Stupid case. Stupid Takumi for writing this stupid case. You shut up, Emma! I only had a few moments. There wasn't enough time for me to do anything else but gather up the pieces. You know, I don't care if she's lying about this testimony that it being dark and all, but seriously. This thing was in fragments. How the hell can you think that, oh my god, it's in fragments, there's blood on it. It must mean Emma is written on it. Objection! Miss Guy, I believe this story conce conceals a truth even you were unaware of. Stop trying to be flowery and just fucking say Gon did the shit. We found the final piece of the jar in, Ke in Chief Gant's safe. Yes, I can't talk anymore. Fucking case. Didn't we already mention we got this from you? I mean, from him? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was... still blood on it. No kidding, considering... Oh, man. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up on the scene. Well, it could be that the final piece that she missed slipped underneath the desk, making it a bit more difficult to find it. But couldn't the defendant have simply missed a piece? 
I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. If it really was dark in there and she wasn't a panic to find them all, wipe them off, and then, I don't know, throw them away, I'm not sure, because if she was trying to hide them, why are they supposedly parts of SL9? So, yeah, the jar makes no sense. If she hid the pieces, they shouldn't be listed as evidence for SL9. And it is listed as evidence of SL9. That may well be, but everyone makes me sense. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. <laughs> Can you believe that? Have you forgotten, Your Honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jar was already broken. Do that. There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to witness. I hope you're not applying this person was Jason Gant. At the time, he was looking for dark downstairs. Besides, even if he was there first, why would he break the jar? Because he's an asshole! The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide that fact for two years? I'm gonna quote those guys from Hercules' movie. If... If it's good. He's the honor, he doesn't have to answer anything. Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. On trail? That thing said trail, right? He proceeded to break the jar, and purposely hit one of the broken pieces. Question. What is this action called? Fabrication. But why would Chief Gant do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Sky believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Over... really... no reason? Stupid woman? Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark, sparing Emma. And there's the reason. The reason why Miss Guy became the chief's puppet. No, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief! She's not protecting him, she's trying to protect you. I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake! Oh my god, Emma, please, leave. I can't take your melodrama. You did. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Like I said in the previous video, she's a main character-ish thing. They can't kill anyone! The fence attorneys make up the... The he? Are you trying... taking lessons from Jack Frost? Also... Wow. A forging... Prosecutor says defense attorneys make up lies to defend their clients. Fucking irony. Foul lies? Imagine that, coming from my own client. I guess you do seem the type who likes to twist the truth. Wait a minute. What if... We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap! Is something wrong, Mr. Raid? Lana... Maybe right after all. What do you mean, right? So you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Raid? Miss Guy, please testify once more. But if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. But, but I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Miss Guy, if you will. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. 
very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. Your rate, the witness may testify once more for the final time. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on the suit of armor's sword. That's a spear. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what had happened, I thought she did it. Why? I'm still not getting a proper explanation why she thought it. And that's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I had Chief Gant help me remove the body from the sword carried. But if it all really was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Unbelievable. The body was impaled in the armor's sword. Hasn't it already been established? Like, several videos ago? You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright? She really does have faith in you. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any pictures from Lana. Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? I seem to remember getting something from her, then... Let's check that evidence again! There must be a picture in there somewhere! Hey, look! I can finally, you know, scientifically investigate it! There's a picture here. I noticed something. Uh, oh my. This is the actual crime scene. No other detective saw the crime scene like this. And you took a picture because... Why? Considering you supposedly thought that your sister had killed the guy, why did you take a picture of it and then kept it for two years? Where did you keep it? If you thought she had done it, why didn't you either not take a picture or why didn't you burn the picture already? And if you're so okay with being blackmailed by Gand, why did you even give this to him in some way or form that could somehow point out that Gant was the one who killed him? Seriously, this is... this doesn't make sense. That's because I contacted Criminal Affairs only after I rearranged the scene. Mr. Wright! That piece is... That piece got out from the test! The cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe. That cloth! It had fingerprints on it! Whosoever Frank Princes are must be the real murderer! What? But those fingerprints, they're yours! Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross-examination. Yes, please, let's get this over with. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Come now, Aji. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Oh, not as bad as 2-1, believe me. Chief Gant? What, now you want to make me out as the bad guy too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? 
You already declined testimony. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. This must be the risk the judge was talking about. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the news tightening around your own neck. Oh, aren't you into that, Edgeworth? No Heimlich for him. No, so what? You think I'm worried? Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean you still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't. But someone does. Someone. So then, what's your excuse, Rido? Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves who knocked over Neil Marshall, causing his death. Conclusive evidence that leaves no doubt for room. No room for doubt. Whatever. Is this true, Mr. Raid? If, if I show the piece of evidence now... Emma's sure to be made out as the murderer. Mr. Raid, if you have any more evidence, present it now. And if you try to conceal anything, you will be the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? I'd better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Should I present that piece of evidence? The one that shows who really killed P Marshall? This is kind of a trap. If you show it now, you get the bad ending, but then I'm gonna point out soon why this is actually a stupid thing, but... I got nothing. Your Honor? I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. You lie. Chief Gant? You... you opened my safe. I know you took what was inside. The conclusive evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Wright, why did you show them? Allow me to talk in a loud voice how I know that you're concealing something. We found it together! No, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at the picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? Actually, that's more like stomach area. It looks like part of it's been cut off for some reason. You mean you had this in your safe? What? That means the chief of police concealing evidence? This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, Rido. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as a murderer. Technically, nobody, except for me, of course, but from the in-game text, has actually labeled him or even tried to frame him for the murder. So, up to now, nobody's trying to do that. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean, you admit to it? I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. So, you really were manipulating her? I knew Lana. If I made it look like the blame lay with her sister, that when she saw the scene, she would ask me for my aid. So you wrote the name on the jar, shattered the jar, 
making it a bit difficult to read the name, took one of the pieces, making it even more difficult to read a name, cut out the handprint, which is her fingerprint, which removes the chance of proof that she actually touched Marshall, and you still thought Lana would somehow just think Emma did it without, with no evidence showing it. So you assisted Miss Guy. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When we rearranged the crime scene, I hid two pieces of evidence. I did this before Lana arrived at the scene. Two pieces of evidence? You mean the items in your safe? But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance? I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that girl committed. Why would anyone blame you for this murder back then, anyway? You're bringing this on yourself by not keeping your fucking mouth shut! You mean, you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? Who do you take me for, fool? I didn't make police chief by dumb luck. See this jar fragment? I hid the most eligible part of Emma's name. You took one E stroke and half of an M. Which, if you look at it now, it doesn't really look like an M. Really, this is dumb. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on the jar too? Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? Pot kettle black! That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean, that piece of cloth? How do you know about it? Oh wait, Felix probably showed him. Come now, Rido. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then? That you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe? Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that being chief and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Which, technically, up to now, nobody is still not doing. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, Righto. You should have shown it then before it was too late. It's been a long battle. No kidding. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. Alright then, let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of... of the victim's vest? Oh, yes. At last you finally brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that the immediate... that be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather. There must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean... It couldn't have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Hmm. You're as slow on the uptake as ever, Worthy. Think about it. Raido had all this time to present this evidence. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? Do you mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that? 
Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whoever the fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. Fucking bull, Phoenix. You were pissing your pants two minutes ago. There's no way you could have envisioned everything going like this and then being all, <laughs> I so totally am proceeding in a plan. I am a genius. No. This is a fucking stupid case and it's badly written. The person whom the fingerprints belong to... Emma? Emma Sky? What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But... Why didn't you tell me? You're really something, Righto. You knew this girl did it all along. And you still tried to pin the murder on me. Nobody tried that! Fucking pros persecution pro complex. Fucking words. So it's true. Tragic but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. And how could you, you monster? This guy? You knew whose fingerprints those were along. You, you acted like she really didn't. Miss Guy, it's not over yet. I said this trial isn't over yet. I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. Oh no, that won't. That will take another two years and two months. Two months after the third game ends. You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to person charges after the trial. I'll have your badge, boy. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Yeah, what? I, I was daydreaming, what? There's one little thing I have to clear up. And what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? Wit? Chief Gant, you're absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction. One that proves who the real killer is. But didn't you just say that the piece of cloth proved who killed Marshall? You gotta watch your words, boy. Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth. What could it possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrannical reign ends here. Behold! The piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth! And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, he should be showing it indeed. It's hard to make out with the blood on his vest, though. That isn't really all that much blood, my good sir. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's natural. His lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. If it's your lungs, you generally cough it up, by the way. Oh, but that piece of cloth... Wait. There's no blood on it. Since Emma Sky's fingerprints are on the cloth, there's no doubt that shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword. 
Now, Chief Gams, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall wasn't impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. I already said how everybody seems to faint at the drop of a hat here. If so, tell me, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Guy, picked up the unconscious prosecutor, and impaled him on the armor's sword? Spear. And to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood, which for some reason still hadn't fallen and broken during the first fall. Then he broke the jar on purpose to leave behind a clue and make Lana believe her sister did it. How? He took half of the evidence and shattered the other half. How the hell do you come to the conclusion Emma did it? Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out the bloodless piece of cloth? Ironic, isn't it? Through the very act of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. By the way, according to a recap, those are 47 no's. I mean O's. That was a close right oh you almost had me. Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you mean you refute his allegations? You see, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. We're not convicting you yet, we're just proving that the defendant isn't the one at fault for a murder that has nothing to do with SL9 right now. We're just saying, you likely killed him. We're not actually using it to say, you did it, we're convicting you right now, verdict, death penalty. Remember, Aji? Earlier, all righto here concealed that piece of cloth. Yes, please. Flashback to that. I already forgot. Well, that's true. But the defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair! Did you actually think you could best me in court? It looks like the last laugh's on you, son. I'm not your son. I'm afraid Mr. Gant's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? True. Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. It worked in all the other cases before and after this. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Well, Mr. Wright? It seems, at last, the time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. I had a plan all along. I'm a super genius. Fuck you, Phoenix. Mr. Wright, do you admit to do it? That you purposefully and illegally conceived this piece of cloth? I can't talk anymore, but fuck it. Certainly, I refused to present evidence at one point. So the evidence is illegal. No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. It's not that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean, you couldn't? There are certain procedures involved when presenting evidence. No, Aji, don't listen to his lies. He's nothing but a coward. You can't let him. There is only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well. Let us settle this once and for all. 
earlier you refused to present evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the law, then do so now. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence Law. I've done my homework too, Chief. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Indeed, Emma's guy's fingerprints were on the piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. Rule 1, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this piece of cloth myself, inside your evidence. A uh, safe. Whatever. It goes without saying I did not have approval from the police department. <clears throat> Remember that at the time when you were given permission by Detective Gumshoe, who at that point was still employed as a detective and permitted you from taking said strip of cloth. So, strip of cloth had approval from the police department. Rule 2, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And here's the crux of the matter. You see, at the time it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. If you want relevancy, just take one look at the picture and... Sorry, but can you recall when was that picture presented? A few minutes prior to Gant appearing? That was shown only a few minutes ago. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. It was then that you approved this cloth as conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. He actually also did so priorly by telling Phoenix, present it, which also can count as an approval. Yes, I'm giving you permission to present this. In other words, the real murderer, and there's only one person who that could be. Quite honestly, I found his Saiyajin sort of thunder god thing to be funnier. I knew I should have gotten rid of him. That good-for-nothing scum. Well, why didn't you? You got him demoted to patrol man. Why didn't you do like with Angel Star and fucking fired him? Or killed him? Considering you already did it twice. For two years, he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman? Yeah, he convinced him to reopen and reinvestigate the case after stealing his ID, apparently. Yeah, that's right. If the evidence transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. 
Then all of a sudden he had to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out there. Too many questions left unanswered. He told me to open up the evidence room and take it out. It's not too late. I'll hand this to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was all panicked, too. I had a bad feeling about this, but never knew it would come to this. That's when I saw it. That accursed knife. I couldn't just pull it out. You would only increase the amount of blood and you couldn't finish what you started. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I was wiping it up. I was worrying so much about Floor, I didn't realize my mistake. Detective Gumshoe's... bloody handprint. I'm not sure if this is a translation error? That's not Gumshoe's handprint, you moron! I used to be known as a crime computer. But everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. Yeah, it was my second time killing one. I was so nervous it was like the first time I killed someone. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put the body in my car. I'm sorry, we couldn't think of any other way to move the body. Yeah, considering this was on the day of evidence transfer where apparently a lot of detectives were around, you carried a body out to the garage? Without anybody noticing you? We broke the trunk, but what's the big deal? You pulled on a lot more than us detectives. What does this have to do with anything? You're horrible. How could you get Miss Guy involved in all of this? She's the one who went in and thought her sister did it. Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker? I feel bad for having to do it. I couldn't sit around and pick and choose what to take. Except you left the jar shards... and the glove. Well... You left the jar fragments and gloves. Gloves? I only saw one! Looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well even close upon examination. It seemed to... Uh, it seemed to fake out everyone for the last two years, so... You got nothing to say here, Edgy. You must have known that. Tell me where the... What are you doing in court? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me. We're the same. Oh, don't pull that crap! He's in court and became a prosecutor because he couldn't forgive himself for possibly killing his father. And now he's just not switching around because the truth! According to this case, anyway. One day you'll understand. If you want to take them on alone, you'll figure out what's needed. Could you guys hurry up? I kinda need the bathroom. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, a G? Wet. Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator and an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. I do feel sorry for the judge. Those days are gone now, Oji. Thanks for all the memories, though. 
No. I think there was something going on between them. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Raido here. And Worthy. And considering Worthy is gonna be gone for a year... Yeah... With these two around, you can't go wrong. You see, if I listen carefully, I can hear it right now. The sound of a new beginning. There are two things I want you to understand. Yes? First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damien Gan betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Sky, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gan help me forge evidence up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Guy. I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. Well, that's your own fucking fault for getting into that trouble anyway. My, my. What high standards you have. For a rookie. I can see why Mia taught you so, thought so highly of you. Who knows, a few years from now, you just might make it to the top. Ah! Don't ever make that face again! Fucking creepy. And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. It was nothing. Liar. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it all and got Mr. Wade right to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. Stop it, I only did my job. He's absolutely right. In light of this case, it seems a good itself good self-examining is in order for all of us. Miss Guy? Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent of murder. However, although the Chief blackmailed you, the fact is you still acted as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all of this? Why are you smiling? It's very creepy. It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant Miss Lana Sky. That is all. Court is adjourned. At long last, it's finally over. Emma? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended. Yes, please, I... Totally already forgot what happened a few seconds ago.
you know, I did my best too. But Lana didn't say a single word to me. You self-centered bitch! I hope I'm not interrupting anything. No, please, interrupt. Oh, I guess I am. I'll come back later. Oh, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run around while on duty. You're not on duty anymore! You got fired! Hey, lighten up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? Nope. Not this time. I came today because of you, pal. Me? That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. Uh, it's not like she couldn't have talked to the defendant after the trial. Or could have gone to the detention center and talked and saw her there. Should she be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell if you won't. Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. I'd still like to you to see... Have you thank me? That day, two years ago. Was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. I asked Gan to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake. But now, I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. But I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you were only doing it for me! No. I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis! I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. Of course. You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now you have. Oh, stop it with that face. Hey, look, it's a hug, just like Maya and Mia. No one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. No, you don't. You make mistakes, you don't try to make up for them, you learn from them. You can't make up for stupid stuff you made in the past. Why must we wake up for mistakes, you ask? I don't know, I can't talk anymore. You talk too much, Phoenix. Because in so doing, we can find the way back to our path. And once we've found our path, we can move on from our past mistakes towards a brighter future. At least, that's what I felt looking at those two sisters making up. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumption. Me? Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? Edgeworth? Stop hiding and come over here. Yes, ma'am. Where was he hiding? In the broom closet waiting for you, you moron! I just came to say... Congratulations. Thank you. Thank 
like you, Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, well, I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter what anyone may say, I realized today that I can't change my own mistakes. Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Kent was right. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime alone, one needs a weapon. It's scary, but I've been thinking the same thing for quite some time now. But Edgeworth... Who knows, given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. I doubt it. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. Don't you understand? Damon Gant, your mentor, Manfred von Karma. We were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime alone, one needs a weapon. That may be right, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. You were working together with Mr. Wright. And because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Uh, sure. What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright, show him what Lana's talking about. Evidence that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find on our own. By the way, I read that the... Um... HD iOS versions of this, at this point, clear the entire court record and only give you the press evidence list, so that's a bit difficult to figure out then. That's the picture I drew! Which started a whole mess. Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence, I had the other. Apart, we wouldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. If you'll excuse me, there are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. No goodbye to me? Edgeworth, what will you do now? Well, whatever you do, just remember, what happened in this trial can either make or break you as a prosecutor. In the end, it's up to you. I know. Seems I owe my thanks too, right? But what I face now is my problem. I'll be waiting for you in court. Very well. Well, at least he said goodbye to me. I'd better be getting back, too. Okay, I'll come visit you. It seems we both still have a lot to learn. Here, this is a little something for you. Scientific investigation! It's the first book I ever bought. Study it well. Thanks, sis! I will! Ugh, <laughs> that face. And so... Another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. 
Well, don't go tritin' off yet, pal. Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she ain't supposed to be out of jail like this. Especially not in the company of somebody who's been, you know, fired as a detective. But... I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Yeah? Basically, I had to bribe a guy at guard in order to sneak her out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Yeah? Way to go, detective! I didn't know you had a wild, wild side! Yeah, well, <laughs> you see... Mr. Wright here is the one who'll be footing the bill. Huh? What? Do you think I could afford that with my salary? Gotta be kidding me, pal. Huh? Thank you, Mr. Wright! You're the best! Why is it... I suddenly feel like I want to scream. Since we're all here, why don't we all go together? Yeah, that's a great idea! Come on, guys! Let's go! Objection. Your script sucks! Especially in this case. By the way, yeah, there's still a post credit scene to come up, so... By the way, this video is the 13th of the 1-5 case, so it is longer than 3-5. And yeah, I don't really have much to say here. The case is too long, characters are annoying, and I pointed out problems with this more often than not. Don't you dare insult Gumshoe like that, Meekins! He's worth a hundred of you! I blame you for this crap. If you hadn't bugged Goodman all this time, he wouldn't have talked about SL9 and its reopening, and he wouldn't have died. So, you know, good fucking job, Marshall. Why don't you just call it Bittersweet Reunion?
Ha! Gay! Oh, by the way, if you think that I was, you know, too negative during the Phoenix trilogy, I can honestly tell you, I was, yes. But the Paula Justice and Miles' at least first game, they never bugged me that much, so... There should be less negativity in Apollo Justice and Ace Attorney Investigations. Probably Ace Attorney Investigations too as well. But I'm gonna take a break before I start on Apollo Justice. Do a different LP. No, if you're wondering about Oracle of Ages? I'm still not entirely sure about that. Yeah, this is sort of the post credit scene I was thinking of. Oh! I actually can check this out. Yeah, she seems to have a habit of doing this. Adorable, isn't it? That was case 1-5, and I'll see you during Apollo Justice next time.